Are you tired of figuring out how to crush Google's notoriously difficult GCA interview? Good news, your quest stops here. Today we're breaking the interview down piece by piece with something you've never seen before. We're diving into a specific job description with a specific resume, and we're going to use our new secret weapon, ChatGPT. Stick around, I will not just improve your odds, but I'm also going to save you a ton of time when trying to have success in this interview. So you ready to change the game? Let's do this. I'm going to hop right into a screen share. Okay, here is our real resume. I have scrapped out any confidential details, but this is a real person's resume for my Slack community. And Sue Smith is looking at UX engineer roles, specifically with Google. So we have all this information here. Again, most of the confidentiality has been scraped out of here, but this is a real resume. Then we head over and we just have this UX engineer Google workspace job description. This is on Google's careers page, so we can check this out really quickly. Next, we head over to ChatGPT and we take these two pieces of data to help us with the GCA interview. So we're gonna start really basically. I want help identifying what appear to be the top 10 themes and skills for my resume. Copy and paste the resume in, no real formatting needed. And then we get down and here's what ChatGPT is able to uncover. Okay, so these are the items and I encourage you if you wanna dive deeper or if this is the type of role you're going after, et cetera, you can pause the video here. But it identifies these top 10 themes, web and mobile app dev, UX and UI design, language proficiency, leadership and community engagement, IoT and cloud tech, consulting and training, project management, achievements, technical tools, and content creation and presentation. So this is really important. This is just identifying some top critical items from our resume. We're gonna to wanna to do this for all interview types, but we'll get into the specificity around GCA in a moment. So now I said, okay, great. Let's go through the same exercise with the job description I'm interested in. So now we're trying to identify and uncover some of the themes from the job description that we have on Google's careers page. And again, we're seeing these same sorts of themes from web and mobile app development to UX and UI design, et cetera. I'm not gonna talk through all of them, but you can see it's not only calling out the items, but it's getting into a little bit more specificity. Then it started to naturally identify what was the cross section between those skills and my resume, but I wanted to dive deeper. So I said, let's dig deeper into the connection between my resume and the job description. Can you please identify the top 10 skills and themes that I've highlighted in my resume that also show up in the job description? Now we're starting to get that really good alignment. Why do them separately to start? Because we just want to understand everything. Having more data before the GCA interview is just going to be really beneficial, but we're seeing, okay, again, what is the theme? Web development, UX, UI, organizational skills, etc. And these are our top 10 items. So we really want to start to think about and keep these items in mind as we're preparing. ChatGPT is aligning these as the cross section of where our experience aligns with the role. Really, really important. So now that we've taken those steps, let's get a little bit more into the GCA item. We have to start a little bit basically. So now, great, now that we've identified these items, let's move forward into the interview. Specifically, I'm going into Google's GCA interview. I want help creating my list of clarifying questions. Without knowing the interview question, can you please provide me 10 clarifying questions that I might want to ask in response to their hypothetical questions? And can you please make these questions either or yes or no questions? So let's talk about this. The GCA interview, typically, if we're casting a wide net, it's going to have three interview questions, one random hypothetical question, one more role-related hypothetical question, and an overarching, pretty open-ended behavioral question, meaning it's likely a behavioral question that you're gonna have a lot of examples for. So for hypothetical questions, we have to ask clarifying questions. This is creating our go-to list. We can put these on our cheat sheet and just make sure that we're always thinking through these themes before we get into the interview. So here are some great questions. 
Are you talking about my experience in a specific project or my overall experience in this area? Are you interested in my most recent experience or should I provide an example from my career? And then what am I instantly noticing? I'm instantly noticing that ChatGPT is trying to bring this back to my career, which I actually don't want. So I intentionally kept this in to show you how to tweak ChatGPT. So let's do it. Let's retry this item. I want to create a strategy for answering hypothetical job interview questions, taking into account the resume and the role. Regardless of the question, what are some likely clarifying questions we might ask in a hypothetical question based on this data? And I'm just asking, hey, does this make sense? And so now we get into more great go-to clarifying questions. Is this scenario related to a specific phase of the product development cycle, such as ideation, design, development, or testing? Is the hypothetical scenario focused in on technical development aspect or UX design, etc.? These are fantastic just items that I want you to be thinking about. If you were going into a UX role, we want to be thinking about goals, user perspective, constraints. These are all great questions. Now, should we ask 10 clarifying questions to these GCA hypothetical questions? Probably not. But what this is doing is this is creating the roadmap for what some potentially good clarifying questions are going to be to ask. And remember, this is thematic based on the job description. So these are constantly going to be items that you're going to want to explore in clarification. So now we want to move on. So I said, great. Now let's go through a similar exercise by creating job interview frameworks. Essentially, a job interview framework is an outline of the critical concepts we might focus in on before solving a hypothetical job interview question. We cover the top 10 themes and skills that showed alignment between my resume and the job description. Now I want to create a few different interview frameworks based on these uh, based on these three categories, strategy and operations, technical and collaboration. Please create three different frameworks think five to seven concepts per framework and simply provide just the concepts, no additional clarification, please. When we think about any hypothetical question, it's usually going to be strategic or operational. Obviously, for this role, it's going to have a little bit of a technical and we're always thinking in terms of collaboration. And that's why I picked those three areas. So now we get into it and look at how great these pre-planned frameworks are. Now, of course, based on your experience, what you like to talk about, you might want to switch them up, but goals, planning, resource allocation, risk management, performance metrics, continuous improvement, stakeholder communication. This is great. And then technical, we're really thinking about proficiency, problem solving, because this is a UX role, UX and UI design, development tools, code quality, performance optimization, testing and validation. That's a great technical framework. And then collaborative is going to be more, again, overarching. This could really work for any role. Team dynamics, cross-functional, conflict resolution, knowledge sharing, feedback reception, stakeholder management, and agile and scrum principles. Again, really good. Now, this is a little bit leaning towards the UX engineer role. Now, what's happened? We all of a sudden have pre-planned clarifying questions that we know we can use in the interview. We have pre-planned frameworks that we also know we can use in the interview, and this has taken us very, very little time to get this fantastic data. So now we want to move on and let's get into the assumption stage. Pre-planned assumptions before the interview can remove a lot of stress. How do we pre-plan assumptions? Well, we have the job description and we know a little bit about the organization. So we can pre-plan assumptions that we may use during the interview. The goal here is to really get you into the mindset of creating a specific scenario so that in the moment you don't get nervous or anxious. So let's just see what happens here. So I said, awesome. Now I want to take a more interesting approach. Based on the job description, I want to create pre-planned assumptions of scenarios that I might face in this specific job. I'm pre-planning to answer hypothetical job interview questions. What are some very specific pre-planned assumptions I might be able to make when answering these types of questions? 
two things to keep in mind is that I want to create these assumptions around items like the users and technology, but I also want to create fictitious scenarios that I might actually face in this role at Google. Let's try 10, please. So we got into we got into this and okay, let's just start and look at the first few. Assumption, users of Google, Google Workspace will be diverse, including different age groups, professions, technical proficiencies, and languages. So now we can start to think about bringing into our assumptions this user diversity, but we can even get more specific about what the age group is, what the location is. Again, we can make assumptions about the technology stack, and it's starting to bring in those specific items. We can start to make assumptions about the design system and maybe talking about a component library that needs to be followed up and contributed to, but we can also add additional details. So let's scroll down through this again. I'm, I want to scroll kind of slowly so that if you do want to pause the video here, you can. So then I was like, okay, these are good areas, but I want a little bit more. So I said, let's go one step deeper. Please create assumptions of fit fictitious scenarios that I mean might need to solve for this role and be creative and specific as you like please and so then we got a little bit more specific so we're going to assume Google workspace is facing a significant drop in user engagement during the onboarding process and there's a need to redesign the onboarding experience to make it more engaging and informative is this a likely scenario maybe maybe so it's just something that we start to think about the scenarios that we might face in the role. These pre-planned assumptions, I cannot emphasize enough how important creating pre-planned assumptions are. Because then when you hear a question, you could say, oh, I could use my user onboarding redesign. Or let's just scroll down a little bit and pick another one. Let's just see here. Security breach response. So a security breach has exposed some user data and there is a need to address the breach, communicate with affected users, and implement additional security measures to future breaches. Now, again, you could be a little bit more specific on where the breach occurred to create a visual and maybe something about a specific security measure that you might take as a UX engineer. But this is just giving us the greatest pathway you can have in a hypothetical interview, especially a GCA interview, which is to go in with a plan. If we don't go in with a plan, it's going to really be hard to have success in these interviews, especially when we get those random GCA questions. Okay, let's move on. So I said, okay, great. Now I want to create 10 hypothetical job interview questions. Please make sure these questions do not ask for examples from my past, but only hypothetical questions. So great. We're talking about things like redesigning the onboarding process for Google Workspace. We are talking about how would we optimize Google Workspace for mobile, etc. These are potential questions that you can get in the GCA interview. Remember, typically one of the hypo hypothetical questions is going to be a little bit more role related. So now we might want to take those practice go to clarifying questions go to frameworks and go to assumptions and just say hey do those actually work for answering more role specific questions and then i thought okay well it would be fun for us to now try some more random questions so i said perfect now let's try some random questions google in their gca interview has been known to ask very random questions such as open a pastry shop can you create 10 sample hypothetical questions like this for me? So when it answered or created these questions for me, what I really like with these questions is especially the first half of the question, because sometimes they won't prompt or give you any additional questioning that's really revolved around the role. So we might just take the first half of these questions, which could definitely be random Google GCA questions. Design a city for astronauts on the on Mars, create a plan to clean the oceans, organize a virtual music festival. And the secondary questions we could just leave out, you would solve if you were interviewing for a UX engineer role, like you're in that role. Wearing the hat of the role when answering random GCA questions is one of the most critical tips I can give. But these were really, really fun questions. And so 
They stayed random enough that I didn't feel like they were leaning too much UX, but sometimes I just like to look at the simplification and just look at the first half of the question. So these are really good questions. Again, ask yourself, could I answer these random questions utilizing my go-to clarifying questions, my now go-to frameworks, and some of those pre-planned assumptions that ChatGPT helped me with? So now, I'm trying to understand a little bit more about my background. One of the items that's not shared enough about the GCA interview is that it's not uncommon to get one behavioral question, but typically that behavioral question is pretty open, meaning it's not gonna be really specific. It's gonna be more of a generic behavioral question, and it's really gonna tap into a larger project, program, initiative, something where you had massive impact. So before doing that, I want to chat GPT to help me identify, well, what are some of the best examples for my career? So taking Sue Smith's resume, what we did is we just asked, great, now let's go back to my resume. What do you think are 10 examples that I should be pulling from my experience to share as great behavioral answers in this job interview? And then it goes through them from developing a hybrid language learning app to technical training in cloud, to my heart rate monitor demo, et cetera. These are all examples from Sue's resume. And again, this in your case, this would be from your resume, but it's really saying, okay, these were 10 really, really strong initiatives that I had in my career. And so sometimes I'm just like, what are my best behavioral examples? Let's not worry about it. Let's have ChatGPT figure that out for us. And then I said, okay, now that's great. Now can you please create 10 practice behavioral job interview questions during Google's GCA interview? They'll likely ask me broader, simple behavioral questions that'll focus on a broader impact that I will bring and have many examples for. Based on this data, can you please create 10 sample behavioral job interview questions for me? And so these were great. Can you describe a situation where you had to work under tight deadlines to deliver a project with significant impact? Again, likely you'll have multiple examples for these types of questions, um, but you can pull off of the data that ChatGPT pulled out of your resume to identify your best examples. Now, one other area that I didn't go into, which you can also do, is you can type out your examples, put them into ChatGPT and say, hey, what are some steps that I likely took that I might have missed? So ChatGPT can even fill in the gaps of your behavioral examples. I didn't put that in for the purpose of this video and it's already really long, but hopefully these steps will really help you with your GCA prep. So there you have it. In 30 minutes or less, you've got a game-changing strategy to ace your GCA interview, but we're not stopping there. I've dropped all the prompts we discussed today right into the YouTube description so you can get started ASAP. But before you dive in, do me a favor, hit that like button if you found this video valuable, comment below, and don't forget to subscribe for more insider tips. I wish you the best of luck as you go in and conquer this Google interview. You got this.